Hello everyone, Heather Kavaki here with Inside Cool Music Magazine, where we tell you compelling stories from authentic musicians. And today we're going to pick the brain of Mr. Dennis Wing. Dennis is an award-winning professional guitarist and teacher who specializes in jazz with hot rhythms and rock and odd time signatures, who's actively involved in teaching and performing in a variety of musical settings throughout Finger Lakes, New York. Dennis has had the honor of performing at Carnegie Hall, the LA Fame Awards, Grassroots Festival, and many other prestigious venues uh, across his more than 30 year long musical career. We're gonna talk about Dennis's ideas in music and jazz and how it relates and impacts his creative process, especially for his latest album and upcoming project uh, that I can't wait to get into. <laughs> So as well as several uh, new projects he's working on, uh, including a recent album release that's as funky as they come, complete with technical prowess, really indulging and in uncommon time signatures. Bottom line though, it is groovy and I am so interested in digging into your inspiration and your process on your musicianship and how on that whole scale and how it all translates into your uh, teaching courses too. So if you'll join me in welcoming Mr. Dennis Wang. How's it going, sir? Heather, thank you so much for having me. This is going to be fun, and well, I hope it's going to be fun for everyone listening. I hope and, so, too. I think it will be. Thanks so much for being on you know, with us. Being part of the Inside Cool, you know, interview. Crew. <laughs> yeah, you're, in the, you're in the cool kids club now. <laughs> after, after 50 years, I finally get to be cool. That's awesome. Hey, there you go. <laughs> well, we're so happy that you could be here with us for our inaugural issue of Inside Cool. Help us get us going. So thank you. So it has been quite an exciting summer so far. The doors are opening back up after everyone's gigging hiatus. Um, although it doesn't seem like that stopped you from keeping busy this past year with new with the new album and uh, working with your students and then your new project that you were just telling me about. Uh, so do you want to tell us about that new project and where you'd like to take your music next? Um, the next project is called For Music Geeks Only. It's actually already been recorded. So I get, you know, there, as you know, like making albums is a long process and there's a mm -hmm. lot of different stages. And some of those stages are, they ha they're out of your hands. Like let's say if you're, you're waiting on the artwork or yep. something. So I, I always get antsy, you know, so I... And so, like, while while I'm not doing anything, I'm already planning, okay, well, what's going to come after this? And plus, I like to release, like, at least one album a year. So mm -hmm. this one, it, not, it may not come out till like, January 2022, but, um, but it's already been all recorded, and I got the mixes back from the studio, and then now I have to listen to them. But it's called For Music Only because it's one-minute, uh, like, vignettes mm -hmm. of different all these different modes some many of which are like exotic more exotic that you don't use every in every day nice. and it's me trying to make a one minute composition out of it with lots of improv and of course it's all guitar and this is the first album where i i actually used canned slash programmed drums oh. so don't 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 hate don't hate me all you purists because i i was i was i'm i'm like that too i'm a purist but you know, I just got new software that mm -hmm. has incredible drum sounds, and I got carried away. So, and I did hey. the bass. So, so anyway, it's called for music. Music geeks only. It'll have a PDF. I think the overall thing is going to be there's going to be the album, the, mm -hmm. the 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 one minute thing with me jamming on it, and then you're going to have a PDF of the like the actual scale in standard notation and in guitar tab, and then you'll have awesome. a backing track. But you can jam in that mode and each tr each backing track will be like a perfect loop so you can you can either you know put it in a, a mm -hmm. software that will just loop it around or you know you just play it for two or three minutes and then hit and then hit start again whatever that so is it's awesome gonna be that is such a great idea fun. like it really just brings like the educational aspect right into your music so you can teach while you're rocking out I'm very excited about that. It was so much fun. It was very not easy to play fluently on weird modes, you know, but it's good for it's good practice. Yeah. So some of them, you know, they're only one minute long. They took me it took me it took me at least 45 minutes per track. To, so 45 minutes start to finish at least for right. one minute's worth of music. So times that by there's 82 uh, vignettes in the entire thing. So times that by you know you're talking 80 like 80 hours i put into it so far 
you know. <laughs> Bless you. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm sure I'm sure you can hear it. The, the hard work. Nasty. I the hope hard so. Hard work. Oh my gosh. The dedication, <laughs> really, sir. Like, oh my gosh. I'm sure you can hear it, and I I can't wait to listen to it. So, what are the odds? Which is odd meters and other types of fun. It dives into some seriously jazzy rhythms and grooves where you jump around time signatures throughout the album that you perform as a trio of guitarists with uh, Kevin Cayley and August Dish with special guest Rob Weinberger on sax, Michelle Corden on flute. And it is really, really a fun album. I've, I've honestly, I've listened to it several times start to finish because it's, I love it. I really do. And I saw it, it took you less than three days to record all 18 songs. Is that right? Yeah, it really is right. It took us two and a half. I remember being home for lunch on Friday, you know, the third day, and we were all done. And I was like, wow, that was, am that was an amazing. But, you know, of course, what I don't say is that, you know, the 12 months it took me to practice uh -huh. and write all that stuff. To, you know? to prepare and just make sure you've got it perfect in the studio. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, my no, gosh. But I, had, I had those guys clear out a week, a week. So we, I started, I, and we had already done one gig. Mm -hmm. before like right before COVID it was March it was my last gig it was March 20, 2020 I guess and then uh, we were supposed to record in May in like April or something and in the end uh, we did October mm -hmm. be uh, only because August is a, was an IC student he's now graduated and so I knew that they were coming back they were gonna they were coming back in September Anyway, it's a long story. So, um, so I, I had them take a week off. So we started, apart from that March gig, we started rehearsals that week, Monday and Tuesday, and then we were in the studio Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know. Gotcha. So, um, so it, it was that was a world. It was a whirlwind. But you know, it's good. It's kind of good like that. I like to be under pressure. You know how mm -hmm. I don't know what your own you know level of perfectionism is, but it, if given the chance, I could easily do like like dozens of takes and not be happy with any of them but yep. now i have no choice we just play it and then you just move on <laughs> <laughs> exactly but you know when you've got those months of of practice under your belt it kind of makes it easier once you get into it definitely makes it easier when you get into the studio but i do i i understand the perfectionist nature of just oh it wasn't exactly how i wanted to hit that note like let's just go back let's do it again take it again so that's that's awesome that you guys were able to to bang it out so quickly. And I'm sure that's honestly just that the best example of your decades of experience, just greasing the wheels of efficiency right there. And, uh, and having a solid crew that's got your back too. Um, I'm sure that helps. Those guys, they were unbelievable. I mean, I did, I practiced that stuff for months. They just walked in and did it in a week, you know? It was wow. Crazy. So how long have you been playing with those guys? Um, not, th well, not that, that configuration not that not that long you know i had played with august and kevin separately on mm -hmm. one or two on well several different occasions but i never apart from that march gig uh not much except for the week that we concentrated on the recording really gotcha gotcha what made you want to dive into an entire album dedicated to the complex technical and the unique meters that you tailored to well, you know, it really, I'm not trying to discount the, the, the work that I did, but, you know, odd meters are nothing new. They've been around since forever in mm -hmm. classical music. And, you know, back in the, I can't remember, I mean, it was the 50s, was uh, Dave Brubeck's Time Out with Take 5 on it. Yeah, famous, yeah. Right? So that's nothing new. It's been, I mean, jazz, you know, the odd time signatures have been around in jazz for 50 years. And so that's nothing new. But um, me personally, like I never played, I always was intrigued by them, but I never played whole songs in them. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you would take a jazz standard and and just put it in five. But it, it seemed, it seemed more like, oh, well, that's like, a, that's clever. Like, like. There's two reasons I want to do the album. One, um, I didn't want the songs to be just an exercise in playing, you know. And one of the biggest compliments I got was from um, uh, uh, not Jazz Times. It was from um, Jazz Weekly. It's called Jazz Weekly, I think. It's, I think it is. The reviewer said, 
uh, something that I can't remember the exact quote, but he said something like, "You never feel like the songs are uh, just an like some an exercise in being clever or something. Like they sound like actual songs." Like I yes, wanted to, yeah, yes. Oh. So there was that, and then the other thing is, a lot of modern jazz is so complicated with odd portions of odd meters all over the place that you actually can't follow it. Like I can't follow it, and so like I just wanted it to be like. Like once we're in, you know, five, seven, nine, thirteen, whatever, mm-hmm. that that's what we're in, and then hopefully you, the listener, can. And feel, maybe the, feel maybe that that's group. not the case, yeah. but that's what I want. Mm-hmm. You know? Like if you're a non-musician listening to it, it's still just wicked catchy. So love it. I appreciate that. I appreciate that because that's what I was going for. I didn't want it to be all elusive and like that's cool too. I'm not knocking that yeah, kind of music, yeah. but if you're if you're never sure what's going on, then uh, then you can't. I can't necessarily get inside it as much as I could uh, uh, if it's something that I, I can grasp. I don't know. Well, it it makes it it shows the accessibility of the time signatures to to musicians looking to you know go outside their their normal box if they're a jazz musician but you know really it doesn't seem like at least how you're describing it doesn't seem like it's as scary as it might sound <laughs> so and then actually, yeah because... actually i'm sorry you just no, remind no. me I, I made a course called um how to play odd times right and it, so it's playoddtimes.com is is the course okay and it's uh it's a it's an audio course with pdfs uh, it's not a video course, but the, um, and so I break it down into very simple, like anyone can do it. You don't, you don't, I don't even use standard notation or I might have standard notation, uh, in the PDFs, but, um, mm-hmm. you don't need to know how to read that in order to, to learn it. So, um, so, they gotcha. so that was part of what I did. Is that, is that specifically for guitar or no, do you, for it's any so instrument. Much for any instrument? Oh, Oh, yeah, before I before I before I launched it, I gave it to a drummer, a saxophone player, and a flautist. And the um the drummer and the sax player, they gave me good feedback, and and they even I tried to gauge from them like how much they would pay. That's how I set the pricing for it by gauging with them. And I don't think the flute player listened to it very much, so whatever. But that was fine. Oh well, <laughs> two out of three. Oh, that is two fun. out of three. Was good. Yeah. <laughs> My next question. Why do you think musicians should care about learning and playing in, in odd time signatures like this and just going out of their bubble? Well, I think they're missing out. A lot of some a lot of musicians are resistant just because they think it's like one t- before I answer the question directly, let me just say a sli- a, a, a small story a sure. small story. Um my son's mom, my ex-wife, is a drummer, and um, and she and I used to play a lot together, and we still play together once in a while. Nice. And um, and I said something on a gig one time, and I said, "Let's play blah 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 in five, like a jazz standard." Mm-hmm. And then I I could see that she was resistant. This is this isn't really about her. A lot of musicians, when they hear that, they're they get uncomfortable. But so I said, "Can we do take five? So. So I kind of basically tricked her into, so I said, okay, well, let's play take five. So we started vamping on take five, but not in the key of take five. We vamped on it in the in the key of the song that I really wanted to play. Oh. And then once the drummer was playing, once she was playing, we went into our song over it and it fit fine. And she was perfectly Tricky. comfortable. Anyway. <laughs> nice. So this is not, this is not really about her. It's about, you know, it's just a perception shift, like, and and odd times are so common now. Like I said, it's in it's in jazz, classical, it's in all kinds of things. I even heard um, this is this is not to be funny, but even in um, uh, the, there's a live version of a, the country song called "It's Five O'clock Somewhere." Mm-hmm. And towards the end, I think it's what is it, Alan Jackson? Towards oh, the end. Jimmy Buffett comes on because there's a line in the song, "What would Jimmy Buffett do?" Yeah, and, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And he shows up and sings. And in the portion where Jimmy Buffett sings, there's an extra couple beats between choruses, and I can't remember the the number of beats, but it's like five or seven or something. Like, mm-hmm. 
something you really have to be skilled to do. Like, to, so, to hear, you, you know, yeah. you just never know. It creeps up all over. And so, so A, musicians who are resistant, you don't know how much fun you're missing out on because it's not that hard. You have, once you get over your mindset, it's mm -hmm. really, it can, I'm not saying it's easy, but it can be, it's a lot more accessible when you just get over the mindset of, there's a barrier just because it's a weird number. Yeah. And number yeah. two, it's just all over music these days. So now that I've done the other album and I could do as many takes as I wanted, the, the level of pressure, yeah, it took a lot longer maybe. You know, I certainly didn't spend 80 hours, you know, doing what are the odds uh, in the studio. We only, as you know, we only did two and a half days. That was rewarding this last album, but a completely different process, like to, to do it all live, like we did What Are The Odds, like that was, it forced a, uh, a whole different level of focus. And and yeah, you're right, it's much more rewarding that way. Um, I think, I think uh, more, more and more people are recording this new way that I just did, where, mm -hmm. where everything's on your computer and the drums are sitting, Say everything sampled and mm -hmm. and there's no there's no pressure to perform live necessarily i think that's that if i may generalize that's not as common probably as multi-tracking where you can take your sweet time you can get it just right you can go over the same phrase six times until it's mm -hmm. perfect what was your process once you had that light bulb go off that you that you wanted to create this album specifically your sixth album actually it uh i don't i'm not sure that i'm not sure i pre-planned it all like that i just started mm -hmm. writing in odd times and then oh, okay actually the reason i called it and other times types of fun was so that i could get all the other songs on the album and still have a cohesive theme which oh, okay. is like you know there's you know there's 18 songs on that album not all of them are in odd times so um but uh but the process was all different things like Sometimes um, it would be um, just me taking a walk and thinking like monkey cage. I wrote walking around the block. Oh, like, cool! Like thinking about about a groove in nine that you know, and then a lot of most of the time I started with the with the rhythms first. Like there's a in the in the liner notes of the album I mentioned an app called Drum Genius, which mm -hmm. I have on my phone is very popular and there's a whole section on odd time signatures a lot of most of the time would be just starting with a rhythm and then there's also another great app with which is called time guru oh, okay and that's a type of metronome where you can set um i don't know if you and i'm not i'm not necessarily like plugging certain products but i'm just <laughs> saying it's what, it's what you used and made you successful in this. you know what like so it's not a standard metronome you you can actually type in like how many eighth notes how many whatever oh, and then okay. you can, if you tap on it it makes it rest so you know and then i saved actually a bunch here let, let me just i don't know if you sure, like, sure um like here's one on on the not from brooklyn album called my my 11 children this was one of the first odd times i wrote it's not on what are the odds but it's on the other um it's on uh also during the pandemic besides what are the odds i did um I, an album with this trio called Not From Brooklyn and mm -hmm. um, and it's on Bandcamp or whatever. But there's a tune called My 11 Children. So in the end, um, um, it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one. Oh, okay. So it just gives you the accent. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can and you can completely customize the accents of of any grouping you want. You know, so it's amazing. That is awesome. I I bet you it was very helpful. <laughs> Time guru, and it's only like two dollars. It was only like two dollars anyway when I bought it. So <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so did you did you write any songs um, like specifically for the album? Like when you said you were writing, you wrote Monkey Cage, like walking around the block was. Was that just something that you were thinking of one day and you were like, oh yeah, that's cool. Or you had the album in mind and you were trying to fill it in with like the, um, odd, the odd signatures. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I think it evolved. I mm -hmm. like, I didn't say I'm going to do an, an album of odd times. I think I just oh, okay. started amassing all these tunes and odd times signatures. And then I was like, wait, I should, I should tie this. I should make an album that somehow 
ties in. But and like I said, I also wanted to include the other songs that weren't in Odd Meter, so that's why I called it and other types of fun. Which incidentally, I learned something about Spotify and the whole digital. And this may be useful for you or any musicians listening. Whatever words are on your album cover have to be in the title and artist's name. For example, if I called it Dennis Wing Trio, which I originally had it as, then the streaming services, if it just says Dennis Wing, they're going to reject it because there's a mismatch. Oh, okay. So, so a word to, <laughs> and the reason I did, and so I actually had to redo the cover and take the word trio out because I didn't want, like you ever go to Spotify and you have your favorite artist and then you have your favorite artist again because it's, the name is slightly different. And then yeah. suddenly they're playing with three, somebody else. Yeah. Three, yes. But then now you can't go to that artist's pro, um, whatever it's called profile mm -hmm. and stream their whole catalog because half their catalog is under a different title. Yeah. So, anyway, so it learned that, so. to be consistent on that. That's, that's a really good tip actually. <laughs> It's a, good, yeah, it's a good tip and, and that's and that's why the album on spotify it says uh what are the odds and then in parentheses odd meters and other types of fun i didn't want all that in in the title it's too long for spotify but i had it on the on the album so i had to use i had it on the cover so you have gotcha. to use it you know <laughs> did you get did you get it kicked back at all or did you just do your research and we're like oh okay that's yeah, what i got yeah, i got to kick i got to kick back first i got to kick back like uh like they said you you know things don't match so we can't do it. You're not. You're not going to get uh, approved by the by the streaming services. So, uh, gotcha. so I went back to the to the duplication service and had to re redo the cover a bit. Gotcha. Um, well, fortunately, learning moment. <laughs> fortunately, it wasn't so it wasn't so bad because the guy who the guy who did the artwork is my stepson. Oh, okay. And he only did the artwork, and the CD guy, the duplication guy, did the did the lettering. So, it 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 wasn't embedded in the artwork. So that was. Nice. Uh, 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 that was a good thing, but it, it yeah. could have been very sticky if it had been. This has been such a treat to have you on, though, Dennis, seriously. And for our premiere issue of the magazine, thank you so much. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I told you we were going to have fun. Thank you for having you me. You did. You called it. <laughs> so before we split, where can the people find you online to get more of Dennis Wing? So just DennisWing.com, D-E-N-N-I-S-W-I-N-G-E. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's uh, all the albums are links to all the albums are there. The actual one we were talking about, mostly the odds album, is dennisswing.com slash odds o d d s. Okay. Uh, and there's I'm on Spotify and Bandcamp and iTunes and blah blah blah, and Facebook and Instagram, and that's about it. All right. All right. So you can also get more from Dennis right here at Inside Cool with his column under the column section, if you can believe it, called Sailing Your Musicianship. It's all about uh, taking your musicianship to the next level. So you definitely want to check that out. All right. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Inside Cool Music Magazine, where we tell you compelling stories from authentic musicians. And you just heard from one right here, Mr. Dennis Wing. If you liked what you heard, check out more feature interviews at InsideCoolMusicMag.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on Facebook and Instagram. Tell your friends all about us. If you want to keep the conversation going or you have a question, drop us a comment anytime. So otherwise, thanks for stopping by and thank you, Dennis, again, really. It was, a, it was quite a treat having you on. <laughs> thanks everyone and have yourself a great day and we'll see you out there.